Why are we removing adult themes from adult games? This is a question I found myself asking more and more as of late, but despite how many times I ask the question, any answer I come up with inevitably makes little to no sense. As a result, I've been forced to reconcile within my own mind that the true answer, even should I be wrong, might in fact make no sense and be a contradictory endeavor destined to confuse or infuriate an ever-expanding group of people. I've discussed the topic of censorship in the past, the most prominent example that I will again use today being Sony and their new subjectively defined policy where games are monitored for sexually explicit content and are often launching with different versions in separate regions. Not only that, but the creative process of certain games has been hampered and development slowed or outright stalled due to the extra cost and development time required to contort a project to these nebulous guidelines of what is and is not appropriate in a mature game. This is where I start to see a contradiction. Why is it that a mature rated 18 plus game is under fire for having nudity and in some cases games are being forced to entirely censor that nudity before distribution can take place? When the adult film industry, at least in the United States, that's where I live, is a multi-billion dollar 18 plus entirely legal occurrence. Why does this discrepancy exist and why is it only now becoming an issue? The answer is because subjective individual policies are now being created or enforced by a select few individuals at a publisher and distributor level and not from an actual legal perspective by a government body or regulatory committee. If you really boil it down to the most basic equation, it makes no sense. An 18 year old can walk down the street and buy a mature rated video game, which might very well be barred from having even partial nudity, but they can go five steps further down the road and buy literal pornography and it is entirely legal. To go even further, 18 years old is the cutoff, again speaking from the perspective of a United States resident, at which an individual can join the military. So effectively, a person can fight and die for their country, but the video games that they buy, with the exact same age cutoff, cannot have nudity, because why, exactly? This is not breaking news by any stretch, however, the adjustment to Sony's censorship policy has been making waves since it was announced. But most recently, a new occurrence has surfaced that made me yet again ask the question, why are we removing mature themes from mature rated video games? The event, on a surface level, appeared to be a concentrated effort to remove all smoking imagery from Gears of War 5. Now, the situation is rather complicated. During my research, it appeared that Microsoft had teamed up with the Truth Initiative and that the goal was a deliberate anti-tobacco campaign designed to reduce imagery across multiple media genres. However, in addition to that, Rod Ferguson, a studio head working on Gears 5, asserted that the Gears franchise has never featured smoking, and he is the driving factor behind that out of a desire to not promote a health hazard. At this point, I should clarify a few things. I am not making the case that Gears needs smoking and bring back the cigarettes, blah, blah, blah. Not that. I actually don't care about the specific material. I care about the thought process. I myself smoke cigars. It's bad for me. I know that. And on a surface level, I don't really care if a game has or does not have smoking imagery. But when you look at the broader situation, it just doesn't make any sense. Gears of War is among the most violent games in history. The title is clearly rated M for Mature or Peggy 18 in other regions. Regardless, the game is marketed as a mature product, an ID card is required to buy it, you can cut people in half with a chainsaw while their guts fly everywhere, but the smoking imagery is getting targeted. Here's where it becomes very important to understand that there are two possible scenarios at play here, and depending on which is primarily true, it will drastically change the reaction. If the smoking imagery was never present, and in truth I can't actually remember ever seeing smoking imagery prominently featured in the Gears series, though I'm not a frequent player to be fair, but anyways, if the imagery was never really there and was never even created because of a deliberate artistic vision that existed long before the game's inception, that's a non-issue. If that really is the case, then I would adamantly defend the game because the creator's vision was precisely depicted and nothing has been transformed in an artificial way later down the line. However, if the opposite is true, and as most of the material I've been able to find very clearly suggests, an outside organization lobbied Microsoft for the ultimate removal of smoking imagery from Gears 5, that is a confusing and ultimately troubling occurrence because their motivation for doing so indicates a potentially broader issue. The issue of media violence leading to actual behavior is heavily debated. Those that believe video game violence leads to legitimate violent acts have been completely unable to prove that assertion, but likewise the group attempting to prove it has no correlation have been similarly unsuccessful. Both sides have produced studies that support their position, and the more credible ones I've been able to find support the idea that it does not impact real-world violence in any way, shape, or form, but inversely truncated studies, graphs, or experiments have been finessed by the opposition to manipulate viewers into believing them as well, so it's not entirely clear. 
But even with that relative lack of clarity, we have to follow the logical thread through to completion when it comes to smoking. If the idea behind smoking is that it truly is a harmful activity, the motivation behind banning it in a video game would fall under the category of preventative measures. The general idea is that glorifying smoking in media might lead to people trying cigarettes, which are addictive, leading to health hazards. However, to legitimately believe that this chain of events is likely enough to warrant broader censorship, one must then also continue that logic through to glorification of violence. Deliberate efforts to remove smoking imagery from Gears of War 5 while you are simultaneously able to bathe in blood and gore, or drink yourself into a stupor within other titles that have a similar age restriction, is ultimately nonsensical. The same way that barring nudity from anime games while down the street pornography can be sold to those exact same law-abiding age-verified customers is just... I, I really don't know what to call it. It makes no sense at all. The entire situation, at least for me, conjures up images of Fahrenheit 451. That may seem extreme, and it is, but the part I am specifically talking about is the social media aspect. In Fahrenheit 451, when media events are being broadcast, the comments are riddled with emojis rather than words. A cute little skull will replace the word death, or a knife will replace the word knife, and this revolves around the language theme, where books and words are deemed as harmful, but I can't help but draw a lot of correlations here. An 18-year-old old enough to buy a Gears of War game, which will contain violence, aggression, and various other adult themes, has been restricted from seeing smoking, very specifically, by a disconnected group that determined the risk of him possibly trying a tobacco product as a result of seeing, in passing, a character in a video game smoke is so pressing and worthwhile that they should have the imagery stricken from the game. This is, in an abstract way, similar to Fahrenheit 451, where words are deemed as potentially harmful so citizens are not allowed to see them. The idea is authoritative, controlling, and requires the belief set in order to justify that individuals, even of a directly conforming age for the product or activity in a legal capacity, are not sufficiently able to make decisions, so decisions need to be made for them, and the world they see must be restructured even without their knowledge or input because it's what's best for them. The fundamental premise is that individual entities well outside the realm of even a central government are now making decisions on what the average citizen is or is not capable of viewing, even without their knowledge. Again, I smoke cigars, not often, but I do, and I know it is bad for me. I am not defending or demanding that more cigarettes be in Gears of War 5, not at all. In fact, this is something I almost would not even care about or think about ordinarily, but therein lies the problem. It's very easy to brush off restrictive policies in media of what can and cannot be shown when the restriction is placed on something seemingly insignificant, or something we agree with, like nudity in anime titles. It's easy to laugh at the people who are upset about that and think, that's meaningless though, stop being so mad. With smoking in Gears of War, Gears of War 5 specifically, we can think, well, smoking is bad for you, so it's fine that they are removing the imagery. But on a most indispensable core level, allowing these things to happen is allowing others to make decisions for for you about what you are and are not allowed to see based on their determination of what you are capable of handling, or what decisions you might make. Restricting the scope of freedom, information, or imagery for individuals when executed by a disconnected third party, even when done for the greater good, should always be something that we analyze with extreme caution. Allowing an 18-year-old to die for their country, but deeming that they are not capable of handling the imagery of smoking in a video game is ludicrous. Allowing adults over the age of 18 to purchase explicit pornography, but locking down video games that depict explicit imagery may be entirely legal, since that restriction is taking place at a publisher or distributor level, such as Valve or Sony, but we should very pointedly be questioning the logic behind that decision, because it's not an insignificant issue. It is a stepping stone towards dangerous precedence. Why are we removing adult themes from adult video games? What's the true reason? It does not usually enhance the gameplay, it does not enhance the end user experience, it does not have a positive impact on game balancing or content scope, so why do it? I am not sure what the exact motivations are, I could speculate, but it would be nothing more than just that, speculation, so I will leave it as a question, with the hopefully well-articulated assertion that we should be very carefully considering the practice of removing perfectly legal, age-restricted themes from similar video games that conform to the exact same maturity or age restriction rating. But that's it. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. We have memberships, merch, stuff like that. Typical YouTuber things, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.